Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Mercado de Lisboa, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to Lisbon, welcome to the market, everybody, which we are going to be building up over the course of several rounds, trying to open up new stands to sell our wares and enhance the attractiveness of our stands by potentially opening up restaurants as well. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run-through. I'm the yellow player, Jen's the purple player, we are ready to go. I am the first player, and I have one coin to my name, which means I have one victory point. Every... Uh, Buck you make in this game is a point at the end. So, how does the game work? Well, um, we all have these little, um, you know, shields that we can keep our money secret behind, which I'm not going to bother with today because I need to keep track of how much money, but normally you shouldn't know exactly how many points, how much money I've got. But on the other side is a little reminder of what you can do on your turn. You can do one of these four things. You can always just get a coin. If you're hard up for cash, you don't want to do anything else, you can get a coin, but that's kind of a painful painful action. The main thing you want to be doing is building new stands in the marketplace, although that will cost you money to build them. You have to lose points to make points in this game. Um, alternatively, between the other two, you can invite customers, I guess you can consider that advertising or something like that, to come to the market and you'll potentially make money off of that, depending on how well you've set things up. Or you can build restaurants, which will only get you one coin, but hey, it's better than spending a whole turn just getting a coin. Better to build a restaurant and get a coin. So, on your turn, you're going to do one of those four things. What am I going to do? Well, I think I'll start out by building a stand. That's what we're here to do. If you don't have any stands in this market, you're not going to make any money. And so, I could build my grapefruit stand or either of my vegetable stands. I'll go on ahead. See, I know I want to grab that. And that's okay. I will grab, I will build my first grape stand. So I can put it anywhere in this five by five grid. Do not be misled by these tiles. This is considered to be an empty space. I could build a stand here, no problem. The thing is, if I build a stand here, I will claim this. This is kind of an investment I can make. And then later on, I can open this restaurant. So, all things being equal, I'd like to grab one of these tiles. And of all the tiles I could grab, I want this one, as uh, this is a pub. It's the only one out on the board, and it's a wild card that can increase the attractiveness of any of my stands. So I'm going to build this here, and I'm going to claim this, and now this restaurant is something that I could build later using that action, which also gets me a point. Okay, now, I have to pay for this. The first stand in a row or a column costs one coin. So now I'm broke. Um, and if uh, if there was already a stand in this row or column, like say if on ne Jen's next turn she wants to build over here, she looks at this row and says, oh, there's two stands? So she would have to pay two coins to build. And you know, later on, if you want to go like this, it would cost three coins to build in the row. You always have to pay... Um, you, you look at the number of stands in the row and the column that you've built in. Whichever has the highest total number of stands, you pay that much in coins. So, I basically built that for free. I've got a pub that I can uh, deploy later. And now at the end of my turn, I take one of these. Uh, a fish place, a meat place, or a flower shop. Uh, so that I can build that later. I like the flower shop. Alright, so... And now that's another stand I can build, although I can't right now because I've got no more money. All right, and uh, then there's always supposed to be three here, so I just go to the bag, and we've got another meat stand. All righty. So, that was my turn. It is now Jen's turn, and she's going to do the same type of thing. She's going to start building her own stands, and uh, since she only has one coin, she cannot build it in this uh, column or in this row, because since I'm already there, it's going to cost her two. So, she will go somewhere else. And I think she had her own grape stand. She's going to kind of get into the neighborhood of mine. She's going to build it right here, which gives her the opportunity to open up a wine bar which is something I was hoping to get, uh, for reasons you'll see in a little bit. But Jen just went ahead and grabbed it. Since there's nobody in this row or column, she had to pay one coin, and now she gets another stand. Um, let's just go on ahead and double down on the fish markets. So she's really, instead of the meat, and then a new market comes out, and it is another grape fruit stand. Okay, I am up for my second turn. And now, I cannot build any more stands because I have no money. So, remember, my other options are just get a coin, or build a restaurant and get a coin, or attract 
customers and get multiple coins depending on the situation. And I think I'm going to attract some customers because I need money. And the three ways I can make money are just spend a turn getting a coin, build a restaurant to get a coin, or attract customers and get hopefully more coins. Although in this case, I think I'm only going to get one. You will notice there are 12 customer tiles that are placed over here, levels 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I can invite any of them. I can just pick them up and then put them at any of these outer entrances. And then, say I grab this one and put it over here, which is actually what I'm thinking about doing, it doesn't cost me anything. But what happens is, because I've uh, put this customer at this entrance, every stand in this row pays out potentially if it's a stand that produces grapes or flowers. You may recall, I grabbed a flower tile. So you might be seeing that I'm looking forward to um, servicing this customer, this nice old lady here, I assume, or could be a gentleman, I suppose. You tell me. It goes either way. Um, that you know, In the short term, they're going to be happy to get some grapes. And then later on, they might want to try some of my flowers. So I'm going to take this one. And I should say, because I am uh, bringing this one to an entrance that only has one stand in the row, that means this row can only support the level one tiles. If I wanted to bring, say, uh, this level three tile, that um, you know wants grapes. I would have to. There would have to be three stands in this column. This column would have to be you know, got a lot of opportunities to bring these people, or even better to bring um, you know these people that want four. Uh, you would have to have four stands in a row. So that's going to happen a little bit later in the game. So anyway, I've done this, and once you put a, a customer down, it's free to bring them in, and now they start shopping. I am the only one who will benefit from this because I've got a fruit stand. And this fruit stand by itself has a quality level of one. And because it has a quality level of one, it's one times the number of people, which is one, which means I got a coin. Alrighty. So I could have spent a whole turn just getting a coin, or I could set myself up for the future because now we both want to get stands in this row that um, serve grapes and flowers. And I've got some flowers, and I'm hoping to grab some more grapes that I can potentially put in this row before too long, because this customer will um, keep paying out as more stuff shows up here. So anyway, so I've kind of set myself up, and a new one comes out. Here's this fella that likes uh, vegetables and fish. All right, so that was my second turn. I'm back to where I started. I've got one coin, but I do have this as well. It is Jen's turn. And well, what is she going to do? She is also broke. Um, and so she cannot build any of these three stands. Can she? No, she can't. Yeah. So she's got an option. Either get a coin, attract somebody like I did to maybe get a little bit of money off of this, or build a restaurant. And I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to take her restaurant tile and uh, she can put this anywhere uh, except for these two spots. So she could put it here and uh, then she has another restaurant she could build later. But that's not what she wants to do. This wine restaurant will make any grape stand, any fruit stand next to it more valuable. It will generate more money when customers show up. So Jen wants to put this someplace that will benefit her grape stand. She'll go on ahead and put it right here. Okay. Now, and the reason he's doing that is because if she put it right here... Oh, whoops. I forgot. By the way, folks, always watch the Klingon subtitles turn on because Paulo already pointed out a very important thing. I had to mark this as my fruit stand when I put it down. That's why we have these little arches. Jen had to mark this one as hers. So we know whose is whose. That was kind of important. Anyway, so now the Jen, if she puts this here, this will benefit both of us. Both of our fruit stands will um, produce more money when customers visit. Jen's not going to do that. She's going to put it over here far away from my fruit stand. So that when a customer comes here, it will generate one, two bucks instead of one buck like mine. So, and remember, every time you build a restaurant, you can make a dollar. So Jen just made a point back. All right. So that was it for her. And uh, now she has no more restaurants to build. And in the future, if anybody were able to uh, get this fruit stand and build it here or here, they'd get a restaurant they can add to the future. And this fruit stand would benefit from Jen's restaurant. So that's something Jen's a little concerned about. Uh, we'll worry about that in a bit, though, uh, because it is my turn. And here's what I want to do. What I want to do is build my um, flower shop 
in uh, this row because this lady will go shopping at my flower shop and she'll give me more money. Um, and if I put it right here, then I can get this tea shop that when I, well, a tea shop, which is green, goes next to a green flower stand, it makes the flower stand more, um, uh, more successful. So that's the ideal thing to do. But remember, if you're going to put a stand in a row or a column where there's already stuff, you have to pay more. So I would have to pay two. I've only got one. I can't do it, right? Yes, I can. Because there is a loophole. When you put a stand down, before you've actually paid for it, when it's still under construction, and I put it down here, um, any customers in that row or column who like what that stand um, generates will give you the income that you can apply towards the building of it. And that's a sneaky little trick in this game. And that's what I'm going to do. I need two coins to build this. I've got one coin. Which got, um, and this little old lady that I put here, since she likes flowers, and this is a, a level one flower shop, it's by itself, it doesn't have anything to bonus it up, it'll generate one dollar. That's the second dollar I need to build this. And now I've got a tea shop that I could put next to here. I'm broke again. Um, but later on, when I put this tea shop right here, it's going to make this, again, a more valuable thing. Because ultimately, I could put a customer here, here, or here that will visit this and produce even more money for me. So anyway, so I've got that. And now at the end of my turn, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab me another grape stand because I'm planning on getting in over here and uh, or over here to take advantage of the restaurant that Jen built. Oh, and let's not forget, I have to mark this as my flower shop. Okay, so that was that. And the, by the way, the reason I made that move really quick, because in a perfect world, I would have liked to wait a little bit more. I could have just gathered some money, um, built the, re uh, you know, and, uh, you know, got, gotten to a, a bigger payday before I built this. But I wanted to snag this as quick as I could, which meant I had to build something. And this was a shortcut that let me build, even though I didn't have enough money, because that little old grandma here kind of helped fund the uh, founding of this stand. So that was my turn. I'm done. I'm broke. I've got two restaurants waiting to be built now, which is going to be nice because when I put this one here, because it's a pub, it's the only one, it will affect all restaurants it's next to. So it'll buttress up both of my restaurants. Okay. So anyway, so that's a little bit later on. I am done. It is Jen's turn. And she, oh, and by the way, a new stand came out. Boop. And it's another fish stand. Okay. So Jen's only got one buck. She's got no restaurants to build. And she would like to get another... And here's the thing. Jen can see, hey, because I put these two stands here, she imagines I am probably going to put this here to make both of those stands more valuable. And because of that, Jen wants to get a stand built here or here um, so that she'll be able to benefit from it as well. Plus, if she builds here, she can set up a sushi restaurant that will make her fish stands more valuable later on. So this is the perfect place for her to build a new stand. Except... She does not have enough money. She would need two bucks because there's already something in this row. Um, and Jen can't make a quick buck by just putting a restaurant down. She already did that. So I think it's a little painful. Jen is just going to spend a turn getting one coin. And that's it. That's her whole turn. Because now on her next turn, she'll be able to put a fish stand here, uh, get the uh, sushi place, and, but, and, and pay the two bucks. So that was Jen's turn. Just grabbed a little bit of cash. We are back to me now. And um, I, I need some cash because I'm broke again. Now, this is just the beginning. Of course, our early investments don't, um, you know, we pretty much burn all our capital on getting stuff built. Over the course of the game, as more and more customers show up, we will start making more and more and more cash. And the game really starts to balloon. But what am I going to do right now? I could go on ahead and uh, build this, say over here to make this a more attractive flower shop. Although this little old lady, she's already bought all her flowers, but I could eyeball this guy and bring him in later on so that I could make two bucks off of this flower shop. Although another thing, I just noticed this, this guy who likes flowers also likes vegetables. 
also likes vegetables. So um, what would be good would be to get a vegetable stand. Like say, if I built this vegetable stand here, which unfortunately would cost me two bucks, and then I get this, then I've got two tea shops that I could put to uh, really increase the value of this. And then when I bring this guy in, he'll be happy to go to my level one vegetable shop and my level three um, uh, flower shop, and I'll get four bucks. But that's a long ways off. Let's see if all this stuff back. I don't have any of these things yet, do I? Or no, I do have the tea. Right. So, do I um, just start building right now? Or do I go like Jen and just spend a little bit of time? I need two cash to be able to build down here. And it would be nice to have the cash on hand. And now, here's one way I could get some of that cash. Just by putting my existing restaurants down. And um, so, let's go on ahead and just put this tea shop here. That gave me one coin. Okay, so I'm saving up for later. It is Jen's turn. She is now going to spend her two and jump over here. And she now has a sushi restaurant. And I'm like, arg! She was... Oh, and this is hers. She is totally correct. This is totally where I was going to build my pub. And now if I build my pub here, hey, I'll get two uses out of it. But she'll get one use. And that's kind of a bummer. Okay, so that's something to consider now that Jen got in on the ground floor over there. Oh, and she needs another tile. Hey, she'll just keep on focusing on this sushi. And she'll try to get sushi all over the place and then put this one sushi restaurant here and it'll pump up all of her sushi restaurants. Or, 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 her, or the restaurant will bump up all of her fish stands. So that could be a nice long-term goal for her. Plus, there's another sushi. I mean, this one could also bump them up again if she really focuses on her little fishy mercantile empire. So that was Jen's turn. It is my turn. And so now... Now, I'm wondering, do I still want to do this? I mean, I'll still get more benefit out of it. One, I'll get a buck right now, so I've got the two bucks I need to be able to build before I bring this guy in. Oh, and by the way... Uh, I, it's worth mentioning, this row and this row, have, each of them have two markets in, which means level two customers could come in to these rows. And like so if this level two customer came here, uh, let's, uh, Jen, you know, they want fish. So they don't want any grapes, so this won't produce any money. But this will produce money, and it would be, well, one times two, but if there's two here because of mine, then it would be two times two be worth four bucks. A single thing could produce four bucks. So the game is starting to ramp up. Well, it's starting to ramp up if I place this. And now I'm a little hesitant to, because I wanted all the benefit of this. So here's the thing. I'm going to call an audible. Jen, she muscled into my territory. I'm going to expand in a different direction. I am going to build this, which is going to give me the one coin I need to continue my stand expansion. I'm going to put it over here. Boom. So I'm the only one who benefits from it. And now I've got uh, the uh, T. Wait a minute. Oh, no, no. Shoot. Oh, I already had this, didn't I? Yes, I did. This was me talking about it. No, no, I already did. Ugh. All right, no, this has already been built. Shoot, 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 shoot. I was thinking, you know, it's not face down. I got myself confused. I was going to, hey, I'll get that, but no. All right. So, I mean, I could build this up here and get that coin. And then hopefully I can get a stand built here or here before Jen does. And I will be able to because I've got money and Jen doesn't. So I'll be able to build here or here and take more advantage of it. And it'll take Jen a while. She might still get in on the ground floor. Arg! All right, I think I am just going to stick with the plan. Jen's going to benefit a little bit from mine, but I'll still benefit more. And because I've got cash on hand, I'll be able to fill this space in before her. So I'll get three stands pumped up by the pub versus her one. I still think that's probably worth it. So I got the extra money and now with the two I could build here next turn and that's going to be very very nice. But in the meantime we come back over to Jen. What is she going to do? I think she's going to be the first to invite a level two customer. And she wishes there were a level two customer that had fish and grapes on their mind because then they'd pay off both but there's not but this one does want fish so Jen will go on ahead and invite them over here okay and uh, now all of the vegetable and fish markets along this row fire off and that's this one and it's Jen's and because I built there I fell right into her trap I, but I, I do think it's worth it in the long run because I'm going to build here first. Uh, Jen gets... This is now a level two. One, two because of my pub. Um, or again, it's not my pub. Once the re You'll notice we don't mark the restaurants. The restaurants, once they're out, they benefit everybody. So anyway, so it's one, two times two people. Jen just made four coins. 
Boom. All right. So uh, that was a big turn for her. And now I better build here because if I don't, she's going to. So back to me. I'm going to go on ahead and quickly, quickly get building, building. And I will put a vegetable stall there. It cost me two. And now here's the beautiful... Well, here's the sad thing. Um, I mean, I, you know, if Jen had put this over here, then when I, you know, you know, to, to activate this fish stall, or if she'd put it over here, let's say... Then when I when when she act when I put this down because there's already an existing customer who wants vegetables these people would come to my vegetable stall after the fact you can make money off of customers when you place the customer tile down or once a customer tile already exists you later on put a uh, uh, what do you call it um, a, a, a stall in place as you write so there we go. But Jen didn't. She put it over here, so I will not benefit. But still, I'm going to spend my two bucks. I'm going to get in on the ground floor. Oh, and by the way, this should have moved over. This should have been... A, I was always three available. And this is the one Jen wanted! The grape and fish! But she's thinking, hey, she'll put it over here next time and get a payday out of both of these. Now that she sees that's there, that's perfect for her. Um, but in the meantime, sorry, I built this here. So now this pub mostly affects me. And I might want to uh, get this one because when this person comes in here, they'll visit my vegetable stand or these people, but they won't visit Jen's fish stand. But worry about that later. It is Jen's turn. And Jen says, oh, this is what I was waiting for. And boom, she'll come over here and she's going to get the big payday. Once again, this generates, it's a level two. So two times two is four. This is a level two as well. So that's um, two level twos. That's four. One, two, three, four times two. Jen just made eight bucks. Boom! Here's a tenner. And now Jen is rolling in the dough. Boom! Wow, I told you! Things were going to... Oh, by the way, when I built this over here, I should have taken a new stall. And by the way, there should have been a new stall out. I totally forgot about that. And let's just go on ahead and continue um, trying to... Because eventually, I'll try and get these pizza restaurants to upgrade the vegetable place. All right, so... That doesn't look good for me, but hey! Um, there are still one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven customer spots that will activate my stuff. And maybe it's time to start doing a little bit of that now. Um, let's see. First of all, are there any level two customers who want flowers and grapes? No, there's not. Oh. Oh, so now I've got a tough choice. So I could quickly go on ahead and put this one here. And hey, at least I'd make... Uh, I'd make um, three times two, I would make six bucks off of this flower stall. But if I wait, if I wait, my precious, and build, I could... No, no, I couldn't. Shoot, 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 shoot. I want to build this... Um, uh, ooh. I will take this one because this per these double people like grapes um, now whenever you inv uh, whenever you invite customers and you introduce you bring them to an entrance you have to have at least one stall in that row or column that matches at least one of the things I'm gonna put this over here so that only I will benefit from it it's two times my level two um, you know grape stand that gets me four bucks all righty so that I have enough money to do what I really want to do and hopefully Jen won't stop me. All right, so, because I want to get this vegetable stand over here, which would cost me three bucks. And if I can do that and then put this person who likes vegetables and flowers here, both my vegetable stand and will, will they'll both trigger. So, that's pretty cool. But I have to wait to see if I'm going to pull that off because Jen could put a customer in this slot anytime she wants. So hopefully she doesn't. She's got a lot of money. Um, chances are she wants to start building up more of her fishy fish empire. And I think she will. Uh, Jen's got tons of cash. She'll spend three. So 10, uh, get seven and change. 50 bop. And she'll build a fish stand right over here in this row that requires three uh, bucks because this is the third thing in this row. And um, she now has another wine restaurant that she could put... Oh, shoot! I was going to say she could put it next to her existing one, but it'll help mine as well. Hold on, then. Urgh. This market is getting crowded. All right, maybe she doesn't want to build that there. Let's get that three bucks back for a second and think about this a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, you know, particularly because putting in this row... Uh, you know, both of these customers are here. And all well, the interesting thing is... Putting this down, this fish, 
will make this customer and this customer very happy because both sides want it. So Jen will make a lot of income off of this fish. Although this is only a level one because there's nothing next to it. Um, but she'll still make one times four. She'll make four bucks off of building this here and she'll get the wine. But, well, here's the thing. If I get this, I'll probably put it up here so that it won't benefit Jen since we both have a little growing wine community there. So maybe even if she does want to do it, just to keep it from me, yeah, maybe. Oh my gosh. So things are starting to get complicated. Is that what Jen's going to do? Yeah, I think so. She will just go ahead and stick with that plan. She's going to pay the three to put it in this row. She's going to get this. And now these customers say, oh, fresh fish. How exciting. Two plus two. So that's four times a level one. That's four. So Jen actually made a profit off of opening. It cost her three, but she made four. So here comes a five. Give it one back. And she's pretty happy with that. And she has control over where this... And also, bear in mind, of course, what Jen is planning on doing is uh, putting this sushi so both of these will level up for customers that will eventually go in these slots. And then ultimately, she'll want to put a sushi restaurant here, too. So she'll have a nice little sushi uh, market cornered. Okay, so Jen is pulling away into the lead, but I've got a long-term plan. I am going to build a vegetable shop over here. And this, um, let's see, you'll notice, by the way, there's two versus one. So in this case, you always have to pay the most. Since there, this is a three versus a two, I have to pay three to get over there. All right, and I didn't get any... Um, oh, and oh, oops, by the way, ah, I keep forgetting to refill this. And it's a fish place. You know what? I should probably get in on some of this fish too, since Jen seems to be so whole hog on it. I mean, I can see she's about to put a sushi thing out. And hey, there's another veg. Okay, Jen's turn. So, she does want to... Um, oh, she so can see now, all of a sudden, I might build a fish stand. She's planning on putting it there. She better do it first. So, Jen is... See, she looks at it. There's nothing in the row. There's one in the column. Jen will have to pay two bucks to build this fish stall. And she gets this um, tea restaurant, which only benefits me, and I wanted that. So, anyway. So, that was that. Jen is over there. Uh, there's no customers in the rows or columns, so she doesn't make any money off of that one. But she's now set to do sushi. And the beautiful thing is, if I had any kind of restaurant... I would put that there right now to prevent Jen from putting it. I have no restaurants on hand. So that is unfortunate. But on the other hand, um, this particular customer has stuck around this long. Jen didn't um, you know, snag it out from underneath me. Or you know what Jen could have done? She could have put a grape one over there. Um, oh, actually, oh, wait, 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 wait. So I've got three here. There are three in this row. I could bring in a level three person. Ugh. <sighs> But there's no level three person that wants some combination of veg, fruit, and flowers. If there was, I would put that there. And two of mine would fire multiplied by three. Uh, oh, well. Still, I mean, i got to worry about Jen, you know, just sweeping in here at any given time. So I'd better do it now. Um, my vegetable stand is only a level one. So I don't think I want this. I'll take this one. And I will come over here. Alrighty, so now um, I'm the only one who's going to make money over here. It's two times um, the value of the flower shops and the grape shop. This flower shop is one, two, three. So that's a level three shop. This grape shop is one, two. So that's f level five times two people. I just made 10 bucks. Boom. And just like that, we are all tied up. Um, and interestingly, this row cannot be filled up anymore. Uh, and also no more customers. These customers are done. So I got pretty much all of the money out of these customers. This row is completely full, but um, you know, this is a level three shop. I need to put customers up there and there, et cetera, et cetera. But um, yeah, now I'm kind of, why did I rush after this? Because, you know what, it's because I saw that and I was thinking, oh, I need to, oh man, that was a bad move. I should have just gotten this person out while there was only two. Because this person is not, this is not doing me any good. Why did I do that? Because there's a lot to think about and I'm playing for two characters at once. So, cut me some slack, internet. Alrighty, anyway though. So that was that. I should have done it sooner. But anyway, it's Jen's turn. She's like, well, I don't know what the heck you were doing, but I'm just going to get over here and build that. Because uh, when you build a restaurant, you make one buck. And now, suddenly, all of these sushi places are super valuable. Arg. All right. 
And um, so what I need to do is I need to fill these customer slots, right? Because these ones are full. These ones are not with um, people who don't want fish. So that Jen will not get her big payday out of all these fish places, all these fishy places. So with that in mind, hey, there's um, two and two. So I could get a level two to go there, 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 or there. And are there any level twos that want flowers and um, vegetables, but not fish? Yes, there are. Um, I'll go on ahead and invite this person over here, and I'll bring them in. Oh, so that's the thing. So if I bring this in, it's two times this. Is, I'm only going to activate one shop. I've got the money, so I'm planning on putting this here. I should put another shop down here first so that I make more cash. But if I do that, Jen might rush in and bring in somebody who wants fish and not flowers. Because I can see, all the, oh no, no, the only one that's here is fish and flowers. So if Jen tries to rush, I will still get a benefit. And, um, right, and I've got more vegetables, so let's go on ahead and put this here. This is going to cost me three. Um, uh, so I get two and change. Alrighty, and uh, that's mine. And now, by the way, a level three customer can come in here. And uh, it's Jen's turn. And a level three customer, is there one I'd like to invite? Not that one. Um, I guess this one, because it would, I, I, again, I would like a level three customer that wants flowers and vegetables and that doesn't exist. And Jen says, you know what? Jen can see what I'm going for. Jen's going to cut me off. She's going to bring in because I've, uh, now I've allowed for level threes to appear here. Boom. These purple came in and Jen, and so everybody selling fish and flowers gets some. Now I'm going to do pretty well here. I've got a level three times three. I just made nine bucks. But Jen is going to activate this. This is a level two times three. Jen just made six bucks. And so I came out ahead. But here's the thing. If Jen hadn't made that move uh, and left over for me, I might have been able to find somebody to put in this slot that benefits both of my buildings. And Jen just cut off one of my chances to do a double building activation. Okay, so that is that. And Jen is still winning as it stands right now. And let's see, who came out? Was it? No, it's a fruit and veg. I want flower and veg in the level threes. Uh, now, here's an interesting thing. If I get a fourth stall here. Oops, and by the way, again, I should have another stall. Let's just keep on trying to focus on the veg. All right. Uh, if I get a fourth stall over here, there is one more place. Or no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, I would want to then put this here because this level four times um, my, you know, times my vegetable stall or my flower stall means only I would get the benefit. So this flower times this would be three times four. That would be a 12 point um, customer coming in. But I can't put that here yet. So my question is, can I get another stall built here? Probably not. If I build another stall here, Jen will take advantage of it and fill that space in before I can. So I better take advantage of this now. Except the problem is, um, it's this vegetable meat or this, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want Jen's fish to trigger. So if I do this and bring this in, hey, I can do this because there are three stalls here and I've got at least a grape or veg. I do have the uh, veg. So I do this. These are ignored, and this is one times three. I just make three coins. But if I hadn't done this, Jen was probably going to block that space before I ever had a chance. So I, I just did that. And now, um, now, the interesting thing is, somebody can still come over here. And it's interesting. It's um, with, with any type of stand, whether it's fish or flower or veg or um, a fruit, anything other than meat, whoever comes here will get the benefit. But um, they'll only benefit from one of these two. Is Jen going to do that? Oh my gosh, Jen should have some more. Let's see, you know what? I think she will have been starting to collect meat because, you know, sooner or later we're going to have meat things. So let's say Jen had taken those. All right, a lot of meat stands. So if Jen had done that, she doesn't want to put meat here, but she could put veg here, which would get her um, not much. Oh, but, but again, Jen still got um, restaurants. So is she going to put this over here? to make this more valuable. And, but it makes mine more valuable too. Is she gonna try and fill this last space in to take advantage of these triples? I mean, but it, it won't be much because, I mean, it'll be a level one. If 
she were to say put a veg thing here, but before then, if she would have gotten a uh, uh, a pizza place and put it here, then this would be two times three, so it'd be six. But as soon as Jen builds something there, chances are I'm gonna rush in. I mean, this game is all about paying attention to what your opponent is doing and beating them to the punch. And the other problem Jen has is a quick scan over here, almost nobody wants all of her fish. There's this one, but that would also be flowers. And, um, I mean, Jen could go on ahead and invite these people here, so it'd be two times this, level two, but she should really get some more sushi in first, which means she should build something here, put the sushi here, then put the person, so this is a level three. Would she be able to pull that off? Um, that's interesting. Let's see here. I mean, she could build any of these here, and it would cost two. She certainly has the money. And then she's got the sushi to put there, so two of her sushi restaurants will be doubled for the rest of the game. But then what if I just fill this space in immediately? It's not like I have any restaurants to plug in there. Plus, it would be very expensive for me to build. It would cost me three bucks. So yeah, I think Jen is going to put her first meat stand down. All right, and that costs her two. And by the way, you'll notice, she can only build three more stands. Um, the game is over once there's only four spaces. Is right over here. Once there's only four empty spaces for customers or four empty spaces to build on, that's what triggers the end of the game. So anyway, so Jen's going to build that, hopefully to be able to get this here now that she's picked it up so that she can have very lucrative stuff. And in the meantime, it's all meat or veg right now. Uh, let's just go on ahead and she's going to continue doubling down on meat. Since she, all right. Another thing comes out. And more meat! Oh my. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build. I'm going to build this vegetable stall I've had for quite a while. This is going to cost me three, because there's three in this row. But now I've got a pizza place. Because here's what I'm thinking. You will notice. Now, if I put vegetable customers here or here, I've got a double vegetable. And now I've got this pizza place. I can make this a double. So that's pretty nice. All right, and then I need something, and what the heck? I've got these as this pizza place. I'll probably want to make some more vegetables. Let's go with that. All right, so, and Jen sees I did that. So now, level threes can go there or there, which means she should fill it up with stuff that doesn't help me. And there just happens to be one. She's going to basically just try and block me. So, uh, this is a level three. The, um, they don't want any of my veg. They only want meat. So, this is a level two times three. Jen just made six bucks. Arg. And so... And that's the problem, because now... Oh, and then uh, another person comes out. I would like to get my pizza place in position first, but now that Jen has signaled her intention, I just better get somebody. Hey, there's three here, and um, this person wants vegetables and meat. I'll put them here. They don't want Jen's grapes, so this is a level one. This is a level one, because I didn't have time to get my pizza restaurant in position, my pizza place, so it's two times three is six. So, um, all right. So I spent three. I made six. My investment paid off. Just as not as much as I'd wanted because Jen signaled her intention to muscle me out. Okay. And now um, it is Jen's turn. And I think she's still winning at 20. No, no, no. We're pretty close. I've got 23. Jen's got 22. But she's got a lot of restaurants to build. And um, there are more opportunities. Come oh, by the way, a new person is available. So <gasps> it's a grape fish. Jen loves grapes and fish. Although I, her best grape fish spots are already filled up, no, by this grape fish. But oh, it's another. It'd be a triple, man. If she could kick these people out and move that in, that would be great. But um, let's see. So there's this triple fish times this one. That'd be nine points. Putting this down here, let's say. Oh man, does she have time? Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Uh, oh, but wait, but wait, but wait, even better. There's this triple, but it'll be, I mean, but she can't, right? Oh, but it's a triple. So th this row is full. This column is full. She can't put these triples down. And as soon as she puts another stand here or here so that she could make this fish meat customer very happy, I might fill one of those spaces in because we are to that point of the game where every time you try to make a move, somebody else, well, they got to figure out if they're going to make their own move or whether they're going to try to cut you off because of the situation you've set up for yourself. Jen would love, she's going to do it. She's going to come over here and see. So this is going to cost her three, which is fine. She can afford it. She's got another restaurant she could build. 
Oh, and she knew. Ah, I keep forgetting. Folks, this is why you turn on the Klingon subtitles. I'm sure, well, probably by now, Paul's just gotten, ooh, flowers. Jen might want to uh, get in on the flower action and not let me monopolize all of it. Okay. So there we go. Let's keep our stuff separate. And now Jen, uh, there's a triple, and she wants to get these people over there because the fish and the meat will both pay day. But you know what? I could take this. Do I have any fish? Do I have... No. Here's the thing. I can't take this from her because I've only got vegetable and fruit and flower stands. I can't place this unless I'm placing it in a row or column. So Jen can't lose that. And am I going to spend my entire turn putting something, getting nothing? For, no, I can't. I literally have nothing in this column. So Jen is free and clear. That was a well-timed thing for her, which means I just have to let it go. And um, well, But now I know what she is going to be doing, so that opens me up to try to build up for some other stuff. Uh, get some more customers out here because, hey, um, both of these customers want fish, don't they? Don't they, don't they? And I could just go on ahead and build right here. This would cost me four. Um, and this fish would only be one. So, ah, it would, I'd break even. If I build this fish, I'd get one times four. I need to take advantage of Jen's sushi. But she hasn't put her other sushi down yet. As soon as she puts this sushi down, I jump in with my fish place. Arg! I do have my pizza place. So I could start making um, my vegetables good. Although, I haven't quite put them in the right pot. I can make this one good, or this one good, or this one good. I haven't got... Or this one. I haven't gotten them close to each other. What was I thinking? Oh my gosh, I'm not quite sure. You know what I'm thinking, folks? I'm thinking my brain is starting to burn a little much here. So I think I'm going to stop right there. Because that should give you a pretty good idea of the overall gameplay of Mercado de Lisboa. And if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.